Good morning, rockers. Today I wanted to talk about the response to the, the drum machine video. I made a video a couple of weeks ago about using drum machines. I told people that you could buy a drum machine for about 20, 30 bucks second hand. And uh, once you start sequencing a drum machine, you have a pretty good idea of uh, beat placement. Also, you have a pretty good idea of uh, what is going to work and what's not going to work. When you're making your own rhythms, you certainly get a very good idea of uh, what feels right and what feels wrong. You know, sometimes putting a snare here or a snare there can change the song completely. So learning to use a drum machine is a really good fundamental. You don't have to, but after that you're going to start using sequences, samplers, and they're all basically uh, you know, working the same way as a drum machine. They're just a little bit more complex. I had a response from one guy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I say drum machines are great because most music you hear uh, on the radio these days also uses a lot of synthesis. So even heavy metal these days has sequenced drums and things on it. But uh, one particular person, uh, he wrote that he only supports live music. I thought that's a funny thing. Because uh, it's a living person who has to sequence that drum beat. It's also a living person who has to put that together and make it into a song. Uh, being a living, breathing human makes no real difference. <sighs> Whether you use a drum machine or a guitar or a piano uh, or a real drum kit, it's all the same. The main thing uh, is that you're creative. It's not important that your string doesn't use electricity, uh, that your uh, instruments don't use electricity even if your instruments do use electricity. That doesn't mean you're not a musician. Uh, if you're playing a synthesizer or a keyboard, that doesn't detract uh, from your art. And you certainly don't have to be a pianist to play a synthesizer. But you know, this is a thing that pops up uh, very often. I, asked the per I said to the person that, yeah, I'm a live person who sequences the drum machine. Uh, and he said, uh, do you even play an instrument? And I thought, yeah, okay. So uh, what, what we hear here, uh, I do have a, a guitar. And I've been sort of learning to play that for a while. Not very well, but learning. I've played keyboards for at least maybe 20 years now. And I've been sequencing and sampling uh, for over 20 years. So what it really boils down to is being productive. The thing is, when someone tells you that they only support live music, or that your music's not real music, or techno's not real music, or electronic music's not real, what people are doing is they're trying to gatekeep. You know, it's called gatekeeping. They're the people who tell you who is real and who's not real. The funny thing is, you'll notice it's usually not musicians making these conversations up. It's usually the punters. You know, the same way that uh, my granddad would have said that uh, electronic music is not real music. Uh, what's real music? Is it Mozart? Is it Beethoven or Tchaikovsky? Is that real music? I don't know. I'm sure it's music to someone's ears. But I'd also say that even things like a baby's laugh is music to a mother's ears. Uh, a good tuned engine is music to a mechanic's ears. I don't think we should be dictating what music is to people. If it makes a sound, and if it comes out of the speaker, and someone listens to it, it's worth making. I don't expect that everyone out there is going to be making uh, top 40 hits or uh, instant classics. You know, not everyone has the ability to write a jailhouse rock or blue suede shoes. But at the same time, you know, what's real and what's not real can also just be a trend. You know, synthesizers were pretty big in the 80s. That was pretty popular. People thought that would disappear. But we still use synthesizers and drum machines to this day. 
after decades of using electronics to make music, I don't think it's realistic to say that it's not real. Uh, the gatekeepers are the ones out there trying to put a stop to the creative people. And like I told my good friend Jason Belzer, I said, uh, don't let the people talking about it stop the people who are really doing it. And that's my advice for today. When people are gatekeeping and saying hip-hop's not real music, or uh, drum machines aren't being able to be used to make real music, or synthesizers aren't real music, or using a PC to move blocks around a screen, and that's not real music. It doesn't matter. What's real is what people like. Uh, if people like it, it doesn't matter what these gatekeepers are telling you. If you like it, it doesn't matter what the gatekeepers are telling you. If you make music for yourself, it shouldn't even matter what these jerks say. Uh, and it's pretty common that uh, the people who are not producing anything are the ones telling people to stop producing that stuff that they don't approve of. Uh, it's kind of funny because when it comes down to it, I think maybe what those people are trying to do is stop creativity in others uh, so that maybe they don't feel so guilty about being so unproductive themselves. It's pretty common when people talk about real music and uh, not real music that they're very opinionated. It's very curious to find out where these opinions come from. Uh, I didn't really like Weezer, that band that came out in the 90s. I didn't like them at all. I said, that's not music. And a friend of mine corrected me and said, well, it's in 4-4, it is music. <laughs> but uh, I don't think that's the definition of music, what uh, time signature it's in or how long it is. Um, music is whatever you want it to be. If you want to hit some pots and pans and sing through a, a fan, that's music. Uh, if you want to like uh, smack two spoons together, uh, and uh, or blow on the top of a, a beer bottle that could be music too more bass workspace is not here to tell people what is real and not real what I'm here to tell you is that I support anything that you're doing that's creative you know if you're not trying to bring people down then you can't be doing too much wrong I think by trying to produce your own music and produce your own sound of course people aren't going to like it it doesn't sound like Eminem or it doesn't sound like uh, you know U2 or whatever you're trying to get the sound of and also you know people usually copy when they're first learning music so that's why they think maybe real music is stuff that sounds like music that has already gone before I don't think that's true at all you know I used to be really big in the drum and bass scene in Brisbane and uh, most people hated that stuff. You know, the music I was making was around 180 beats a minute. 180 beats a minute is just crazy. But that doesn't mean it's not music. It just means it's particularly fast. So anyway, here's the, the lesson of the day. Don't let the people talking about it stop the people doing it. If you're a musician, if you're a producer, if you've got a copy of Reaper or Ableton or Logic or whatever, if you're using a door to make music, it's still music. If it comes out of the speakers and someone says, hey, that sounds pretty good, you did a good job. Not everyone's going to like your music. Maybe even your mum and dad don't even like your music. Maybe your girlfriend doesn't even like the music that you're doing. I had a girlfriend once when I was producing drum and bass who sometimes complained about a particular um, percussion instrument I was using she didn't realize it was the click track so she thought I was always using a percussion instrument uh, in my songs but it wasn't a percussion instrument it was me listening to the click track while I made my tunes so again you know people might not even know what they're listening to a good drum machine could be a very good start uh, to you know, learning about production. 
If you just want to learn about songs and music and notes, sure, you could buy a guitar. You could easily get guitars on eBay or uh, Amazon for about 150 bucks. You know, $150 for an instrument is not too much of an investment, considering that some synthesizers out there are thousands of dollars. Whatever you do, buy some bongos, congas, whatever. Or, or literally get some tin cans from your kitchen and start hitting them and record that. I promise, someone out there is going to like it. Someone out there is going to say, I was not expecting that and I am pleasantly surprised. The other people who say I only support live music, well, I, I would really like to, <laughs> I ask the guy, which bands in particular do you support? And uh, he had no answer for that. You know, so talking about supporting bands means money. If you support live music, you pay to see live shows. If you support a particular artist, you buy his CDs or you buy his streams or hers. If you support people, you give them money. Supporting is not just saying, I prefer rock and roll or I prefer uh, classical music. That's not supporting anything. That's preferring something. Sure, you could talk about that all day too. But all I'm trying to say here is, don't let that bullshit stop you from being creative. Your best friends might not help you. Uh, your, your girlfriend might turn her back on what you're trying to do. In fact, your girlfriend might really hate the idea that you might even be successful with music and that might take you away from her. Your friends might not like to see you getting successful because then that reminds them about the lives that they're living and how they are not being as productive or as successful as they would like to be. So that's what I think gatekeeping is. Gatekeeping is when people try to stop you doing something by saying that you're not really that or you're not a real mother, you're not a real father, you're not a real whatever. You are whatever you want to be. And if you start producing, I promise, a year from today, a year from buying your first drum machine or guitar or whatever, you won't even recognize yourself. You'll be so much more uh, confident in your music. And I don't even think you're going to listen to people, uh, these sorts of people who say, I support live music when you do a, uh, a little video on drum machines. And anyway, the guy who wrote that, uh, I'm positive that most of his favorite songs, because he likes uh, reggae dancehall, I'm sure that almost all of his favorite songs feature drum machines. Because even since the 80s, a lot of dancehall, reggae, dub, oh my, well, that's just the reggae field. All of them use drum machines. Hip-hop wouldn't exist without drum machines and samplers. So, don't look at the machine, look at what comes out of it. Be creative. Alright, so, that's the end of my chat for this morning. Don't let the buggers who are talking about it stop the people doing it. And that's all I really wanted to say. Okay, thanks for tuning in today. This is John Green on More Bass Workspace. I'm not sure if you can see me because you're kind of in shadow at the moment. But uh, hopefully when I get home, this video is going to turn out okay too. Alright, thanks for watching. More Bass Workspace. Subscribe if you're interested. Or at least pass it on or share it. If you think someone else might be interested in this topic. Alright, thanks.